In finite element analysis, accurately predicting stresses on surfaces is crucial in many applications. For example, in fatigue life assessment, we use the stress life curve to predict an object's life. And in certain regions of the stress strain curve, the cyclic loading life is very sensitive to stress. A slight change of stress can result in hundreds of thousands of cyclic loading differences in life prediction. Although the finite element method is generally quite accurate in predicting the body stress when the model is well defined, stress on the surface may need special treatment. That is due to the extrapolation that is used to obtain stress on the nodes. In the finite element method, stresses are first obtained on Gauss integration points which are located inside the element and then extrapolated to the surface. For a coarse mesh with large stress gradients, extrapolation may not be sufficient to provide accurate stresses on the surface. In this video, we will use an example to demonstrate the surface stress inaccuracy caused by coarse meshes with large stress gradients and show you how to overcome it by using the surface coating technique. This technique can be used not just for fatigue analysis, but for all analyses where accurate surface stresses are desired. Ready? Let's go. The surface coating technology is an efficient way to obtain accurate surface stresses. It places shell elements of a specified material on the selected face or faces of the model. Based on how these elements are defined, they may be used either for post-processing purposes only or for modeling real coatings. In the first case, these surface coating elements do not change the stiffness of the model and share the same deformation as the underlying solids based on which the stress values are calculated. Since no out-of-plane extrapolation is needed, the stresses obtained by surface coating are quite accurate. As mentioned before, by choosing the appropriate options, the surface coating elements can also be used to model real coatings, and thickness is needed in that case. However, we'll only focus on the post-processing function of the surface coating in this video. Now let's use a simulation example to illustrate possible inaccuracy caused by extrapolation and how surface coatings can help in this case. We have a shaft model set up. The shaft is fixed on one end and it has a vertical loading on the other end. This type of shaft with a change in diameter is very common in engineered structures and is typically seen in automotive components such as in the drivetrain or suspension. It experiences high cyclic loading in service Thus, we must predict surface stress accurately to help the assessment of the fatigue life. In the first case, the global mesh size seems okay. And if we zoom into the fillet region, we can see there are already five elements trying to capture the stress concentration of the fillet. However, if we do a section cut view and check the mesh, we will see that the element size normal to the surface direction is very large. As a result, the error associated with attempting to extrapolate large differences in stresses in the coarse element can be significant. Let's run the simulation and plot the equivalent stress on the fillet. We see a maximum stress of about 178 megapascals. Now let's add a surface coating to the fillet and rerun the simulation. To add the surface coating, right click on geometry, then insert surface coating. Select a region where we want to obtain more accurate surface stress. In the definition, we define the stiffness behavior to be stress evaluation only, since we want to use these surface elements only to evaluate surface stresses and not to model a physical surface coating. Next, let's assign a material to the surface coating. Material is needed here because it will be used to calculate the surface stress. In this case, it should be the same as the base material. Now we have successfully applied the surface coating. Let's rerun the simulation. To obtain stress on surface coatings, we need to change the contour plot scoping method to surface coating and select the one we just defined. In this case, we see a high stress value of about 220 megapascals which is quite different from the extrapolation value in the previous plot. To verify the result of the surface coating, let's run another simulation. In this case, we have a finer mesh on the fillet surface and a much smaller mesh size in the normal to surface direction 
to reduce the inaccuracies of extrapolating large stress gradients we saw with the coarse mesh model. Let's first run the simulation without surface coating. Next, run a simulation with surface coating and plot the equivalent stress. We can see that the results are almost the same, which seems to indicate that this value of peak stress is accurate. Now let's compare the accurate value of peak stress with the previous case where we used a coarse mesh. We see that when the mesh is coarse and surface coating elements are used, the peak stress value in the fillet region is quite close to the one we obtained by refining the mesh. So, we're able to obtain the similar level of accuracy in surface stress, even when the mesh is coarse in the normal to surface direction, simply by using the surface coating elements. While the surface coating technique can increase the accuracy of surface stresses, keep in mind that mesh refinement studies are also important to assure we have sufficient elements and their associated integration points to capture the stress gradients. So let's summarize the important learnings from this video. Using a coarse mesh in the normal to surface direction can result in inaccurate surface stresses due to extrapolation if there are large stress gradients, and reducing the mesh size in that direction can improve accuracy. However, a more efficient method is using surface coating to achieve the same accurate results at a low computational cost. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. To find more information about surface evaluation or other topics, check our channel for more how-to videos and visit ansys.com courses today.